Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy 4th of July to every single one of you. Happy Independence Day to everyone. Now, I'm going to let you know what you can expect so you can time everything going on for this afternoon. Also, severe weather. We do have hurricane force winds coming for today, and I will let you know all updates. Plus, what we can expect as far as hurricane season and when is it actually going to start. So I will put timestamps in the description. That way you can go to whichever part you want to see. And remember, the links are below so you can follow me on other platforms as well. Now let's get into the information. Now remember, we do have this summer cold front coming down. So we do have warm temperatures popping all the way up this afternoon and some cooler temperatures for the upper Midwest. Very hot for the southwest. Now this will continue to keep coming down to the south and east for tomorrow. Overnight temperatures for tonight. Then for tomorrow, those temperatures are going to pop right back up. But we do have some storms brewing up as well. So it is going to brew right back down as the evening goes along. Now I waited for the 12Z to come out for today before I posted this video. That way we had the balloon data, the best information we have on these storms. So you do have some storms for this morning, but that is going to start going away. But it's going to start building right back up this afternoon, especially for Colorado, southeastern Wyoming, going into Nebraska, going to Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and this will stretch into Iowa and Kansas as well, and this is bringing some severe weather with it. Now, there is some storms across the southeast, and there is some storms that's brewing up across the northeast as well, but a lot of this is going to dissipate by the time the later hours come in, by the time your partying starts ramping up, you're enjoying your barbecue, you're starting to do your fireworks, and a lot of y'all are really going to have a great afternoon after this weather does pass us. And this is going to ramp up once again for tomorrow. We do have severe weather outlooks and it is bringing more storms across the U.S. So you can see the latest updates that we have for today and it is a small chance for tornadoes, a 2%. That could grow just a little bit more. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. I don't see this growing a whole bunch. You do have chances for winds and just like I told you yesterday, they're going to ramp this up. It has been ramped up right in this area for Nebraska and Kansas. You have 5%, which means you're going to have about 30 miles per hour wind gusts, maybe up to 40s. But all this slight risk right here, all this yellow and this red, especially the red and the black. The black is significant. That means at least 75 miles per hour wind gusts. Here's your cities and states at risk for today. It's also bringing some hail in the same areas. Now, right here, a significant severe for Nebraska. That means at least two inches in diameter. And what I can see with the Euro with the lightning strikes is that this could stretch a little bit further, guys. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for today. And you can see from National Weather Service, severe thunderstorms are most likely today from the central Great Plains into the western Great Lakes from late afternoon into tonight. Severe thunderstorm gusts, possibly significant, will be the primary hazard, with instances of large to very large hail also possible. So, so far, portions of Nebraska and Kansas is the biggest at risk. You can see right here from your National Weather Service that you have gusts up to 80 miles per hour for today. You have a high chance of that. Also, ping pong size hail, you have a low chance for tornadoes and maybe a little bit of flash flooding. Now here's your timing on when these storms are coming and as it comes later into the evening, it's gonna start weakening down towards midnight and 2 a.m. And you see this here, damaging wind gusts are expected to go down to 70 miles per hour, which is bad enough, but it's not gonna be the 80. It is gonna start weakening down as the night comes along. But you can see with the lightning strikes with the Euro that these storms are gonna pop up all afternoon long and right around four and five o'clock, all this white is indicative to large hail forming. And you see a lot of lightning strikes coming all the way from Kansas, Nebraska, going into western Iowa, going a little bit of Minnesota into northern Wisconsin, all the way to 7 and 8 o'clock tonight before that starts weakening down. So I think that the large hail could move a little bit further. Now you can see with your wind gust that it does pick up around 4 and 5 o'clock, bringing up some strong storms. 40, 50, 60, 70, even possibly up to 80. So far, HRRR is showing almost 90. So it's about 70 to 80, just like National Weather Service says. And it will start weakening down as the evening comes along by midnight and early morning hours as it goes into northern Missouri. And you can see for the west side of the U.S. all evening long, everybody is in some very small amount of winds. But this is picking up right around Colorado, southern Wyoming, going into Nebraska and going into Kansas with 50, 60, 70, even possibly 80 miles per hour wind gusts. But as it goes from 11 o'clock and midnight, that's when it's gonna start moving into southern Iowa with maybe 40 miles per hour wind gusts, but Missouri is gonna start feeling some wind gusts as well. 
40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts on western Missouri, western, northwestern. And then for tomorrow, we might have some more winds pop up with those storms, maybe 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Not a lot going on. And you can see these storms from National Weather Service precipitation model that's not bringing a lot of rainfall. So as you go from 7 o'clock all the way to 1 o'clock in the morning, it's a very light amount of rainfall across the U.S., around the north central, the upper midwest, the southeast, and for the northeast. Very light amounts. And as these storms come for tomorrow, it's just going to bring more rainfall with y'all all the way until Thursday night, Friday morning. So you can see this here for the west side of the U.S., very light amounts. All that green is about a quarter inch. The blue starts getting towards a half an inch, a little more. And you start getting about an inch for southeastern Nebraska going into western Iowa, maybe a little bit of southern Minnesota. And as you go all the way until Friday morning, Thursday afternoon, it starts adding up a little bit more for Kansas, maybe northern Oklahoma. Not a lot of precipitation. And you can also see this for the east side of the U.S. Right? You have a quarter of an inch up to a half an inch for southern Minnesota, a little bit for northern Wisconsin, a little bit over here for southern Wisconsin around the Milwaukee area, not much. Everybody is just going to get a little bit of rainfall, including northeast over here by Boston. You might get the latest storms, but it will clear up in time for you to, to do your celebration. And you see the rainfall that's coming with the severe weather for the next couple of days, all the way to Thursday afternoon, all the way to Friday morning. That is bringing still an inch of rainfall towards the Carolinas, still over here towards southern Florida, and some towards central to southern Mississippi. But everyone else is just getting a little bit of rainfall for the next couple of days. Not a lot, but it just a little bit. We also can see from here today, over here by Boston area, you are going to have some storms for this afternoon. And there is some in the south that's going to brew up as well, all the way to 7, 8 o'clock tonight. You still got severe weather coming in for southeastern Nebraska, going in northern Kansas, all the way maybe a little bit for western Iowa, southern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin. But as you go from 10 o'clock towards midnight, you can see that it starts dissipating for almost everyone. You got some for the coast of North Carolina, not much. But these storms right here for the central U.S., the central plains, mostly Nebraska, going into Iowa, southeastern Kansas, maybe western Missouri. Y'all going to have the storms the longest as this all starts dissipating overnight. And everyone pretty much is just going to enjoy the rest of the evening, enjoy the celebration. The storm should not ruin any of your fireworks. Now, as this summer cold front comes on down for tomorrow, we do have our severe weather. And once again, it is a small chance for tornadoes. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. It is still bringing some winds and it is still bringing some hail, but I think this could mild down some on the winds. I'm not showing a lot of winds. So I will update you first thing in the morning. Also for Thursday, we still have severe weather. We have a 5% and a 15%. So we'll update this as well in the morning. Now you can see a summer cold front from National Weather Service for the next 6 to 10 day temperature probability you're going to be below average and all of this blue. And it is going to be the coldest up here, not super cold, but it's going to weaken down as it goes towards the east. And everyone else is just going to be above average temperatures, especially for the south central once again. So here's your highs for today. You can see that you have the 90s for the upper Midwest going into the north central plains. West coast is going to be cooled for today. And you have the upper Midwest with this cold front coming through. You're going to be cooler for today as well. Your highs for tomorrow is going to continue. And you can see over here for southeastern Wisconsin, you're still going to be in the high 80s to the low 90s with this highs for, for tomorrow with these warm temperatures coming across the south. Also, this cool front, this is your highs for tomorrow and the West Coast. And as you go through Thursday, it's going to keep on moving down, cooling everybody down. This is your highs for Thursday, for Friday, for Saturday, and then for Sunday. So it's not no big cold front coming through, but it is going to bring down your high temperatures even along the West Coast. Now, your lows is going to be for tonight. It's not going to be super cold, but as you go through for tomorrow, it's going to bring in those high 40s. As you go through Thursday, it's going to start moving a little bit further where you're going to be moving your low temperatures, your 40s and your 50s. And as you go for Friday, it's going to move even further. You're going to be in the 50s for Saturday and for Sunday. Those are your low temperatures this week. Plus, updates you on this hurricane season. You can see that we still have this dust moving through. We still have a little, little plume moving through Texas, Louisiana. It's not showing super thick, but there is a thick dust going through the Lesser Antilles, going by Puerto Rico and the islands, even towards Dominican Republic and Haiti. So you do have some dust that's going to be moving through and maybe by Thursday, Friday, that's going to move towards the Bahamas. Well, we have another big plume coming off to MDR all the way to July 10th and beyond. And that could be going around the same region while we get another plume coming off after that. I'm showing this could last all the way to July 20th, maybe a little further. 
Now you can see this plume moving through all day for today and it is going to come through for tomorrow as well. Really strong through the Lesser Antilles. Now this is bringing almost 800. Now you need to have 100 particles to make it unhealthy for sensitive groups. And you see you're not really getting this way. This is going to put you all in the moderate. So you should pretty much be okay. Them bigger plumes is what's worrying me the most because those show that it was a lot stronger. And you can see it does go through Texas and some of Louisiana as we go through tomorrow afternoon. But still, it's showing less than 100 so far. It's bringing y'all anywhere from 50, maybe to 75 particles as this moves through. And it's about moderate. You need to have it at 100 for it to be at unhealthy levels. So Dallas, Austin, you're going to be somewhere in between 50 and 75. So it won't be at the unhealthy for sensitive groups just quite. But it is going to be a little close. Just, just be aware you do have some particles of dust that will be moving through as you go through Wednesday and Thursday. And a quick update on that storm coming on the 10th. The trend has been more northern. Yay, that's a good thing, but it, the tail whip of the southern side of the system could bring us problems. And you can see this from the Euro as you go from the 10th and on. That storm stays more northern, so that will be some more bad news for Canada. God bless you, Canada. I will update this and so you can possibly know what your impacts can be. And you can see with your lower winds aloft that it is bringing some more stronger winds coming through the Great Lakes as we go from the 10th through the 12th so that could bring some more storms maybe a little bit of high winds with that and then you can see the tail whip of it could bring some more severe weather with that as well so i will keep you updated but so far the latest trend has been a more northern push out of the u.s so to give you a better timing of when we can start expecting some of these tropical cyclones to form up for our hurricane season of course nothing in the next seven days from national hurricane center from the tropical atlantic and you're still expecting a cyclone to form up in the eastern pacific going west northwest no threat to anyone matter of fact there could be a second one coming later in july for y'all still going west northwest no threat to anyone and as you look at the update on your potential velocity anomaly, which shows favorable or unfavorable environment for these storms to grow, you can see with the GFS, I'll show you the Euro as well, that a storm form up in the eastern Pacific, favorable environment for it. Plus, there's another one that could form up around the teens of July, a little bit weaker of a chance, and then it just gets weaker and weaker as we go along. Also for the Caribbean and the MDR, with all that dust, it has it in the neutral to unfavorable environment. Nothing will form. You can also see this with the Euro. So we have that favorable environment of that system in the Eastern Pacific. While there is some lift in the Atlantic, but nothing's going to form out of that. We have the dust just messing everything up. And as you go later on, you see that second one has a very weak chance compared to the Euro and the GFS of anything forming up. So that second one's a possibility. At the same time, it's still not going to pose no threat, so it don't matter. But you can see right here also from a neutral to a very unfavorable environment, all the way to the 20th of July, agreeing with the Euro as well. And when you look at the long range with the Euro, you see how that one is form up in Eastern Pacific. And that other one is more like a neutral phase, so it might form up, probably not, maybe some heavy precipitation. While you're in that neutral to unfavorable environment all the way to late July, according to the Euro. Matter of fact, it's going to stretch into the Eastern Pacific as well. And that's why that's at a neutral phase and probably will not form up. We're going to a lot of unfavorable environment till the end of July for the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic sooner or later. But you can see as we go through August, we have a little bit of unfavorable environment, which could be a more or less plume of dust passing through. But as we go through August, we're going to favorable environment on both sides where our hurricane season is going to start picking up, guys. You can also see this on the next 10 days for possible tropical cyclones. Maybe something can form up in the eastern Pacific. One is expected, maybe two. But anything that comes off the MDR, the main development region, that it will come off and weaken very quickly will not last. This is according to GFS. And this is according to the Euro. You can see it's the same shot, guys. We might have some storms front and deuce come off the northeast, and maybe something will form up out there in the Atlantic. No threat to anyone, but it could get a name out of it. Same thing for the eastern Pacific going to the west-northwest, and anything coming off the MDR will not last for the next 10 days. So thank you very much for your time. God bless all of you. Hope you have a very great evening. Remember, be safe. <laughs> Even though there's a little bit of rain in the air, Bring your hose out for your fireworks. Make sure there's no big problems come out of that. Remember, above all things, when we celebrate, remember the biggest celebration there is. Jesus Christ saving us from the wrath of God. Amen. That's the biggest celebration that we should also celebrate. Psalm 
149. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a wonderful day today. If anyone is wondering, this shirt is one of my favorite shirts. It says, I took a DNA test and God is the father. <laughs> I love that. I think it's great. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always sings praises to y'all, brings it up in your hearts, and you sing praises to him and glorify him by glorifying Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Have a great night, every single one of you.